The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman Amana and Daikin Brands. Today, I am joined here with Roberto. Roberto, you're one of the product managers for all of our split systems. Roberto, first question I'd love to ask all our guests, how in the world did you get into this industry? This is a very good question. Uh, well, thank you for having me first. Uh, so we need to go back a few years ago. Uh, when I was finishing my college degree, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, but my dad, uh, in that time, he was an operation manager for a mechanical contractor. And it was summer. I remember just finishing, uh, everything in college. And he's like, what do you do this summer? I'm like, uh, vacations. And he's like, I have something for you. And then I started working uh, part-time and I didn't stop until now. A lot of, uh, I would say I started with residential, then I moved to commercial, like commercial as well. Uh, and then, uh, well, I always wanted to work with, um, for a manufacturer and I knew about Daikin and their products and their innovation. So I think it was the right move to be here. Well, Roberto, we're so glad you're here. There are a lot of changes happening this year oh, yeah. and, and we want to talk, you know, in particular about A2Ls and, and what in the world is bringing upon all of this change that we're seeing? Yeah, this is a very good question. So. What we're witnessing here is a significant regulatory change towards low global warming potential refrigerants. And this has happened all, all over the world right now. But when you look into what is driving this change, the root cause is global warming. Global warming is what is really impacting on everything that is happening now from a regulatory standpoint. And let's go back to 2016, where a bunch of countries, right, they signed an agreement, the Paris Agreement, where they acknowledge that global warming is an issue, and that the solution is decarbonization. So countries like the U.S. and Canada, they sign, they committed to be net zero by 2050. This is a big commitment, right? So you got it. This commitment is what really is impacting and is what is driving this change. And then you see this regulatory, the A2L mark, right? Where in January 1st, 2025, we cannot manufacture equipment without Fortnite equipment. You need to use a low global warming potential refrigerant, right? And then we have another mark that is very important, and it's something that is happening in parallel, and it's the phase down with the EPA, mm -hmm. where the EPA pretty much during the next 15 years is going to phase down all the refrigerants, all the HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, right? Um, 85%. And we're going to move from having this to just having this, and it's going to be very important to have compact equipment, very efficient, mm. and that does the best usage of every single drop of refrigerant. So when you think about that, uh, obviously, uh, Daikin committed very early on that we are going with R32. Uh, what was the reason that Daikin chose R32 above all of the other choices that they had out there? One of the main reasons is, well, first of all, for Daikin, R32 is not a new technology, not a new refrigerant. We have used in R32 from 2012, and it's a proven technology all across the world. So I'm original from Spain, from Barcelona. And so we have been using R32 many years over there. It's very safe. It's a proven technology. And also it allows to reduce not only the refrigerant charge on equipment, but also improve efficiency improve performance. Mm -hmm. And that uh, also helps with reduction on carbon footprint. So you talked a little bit about uh, the fact that they're going to be shrinking the amount of uh, refrigerants that can be available. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody's looking forward to 2029 when they have the next big uh, phase out of the availability of refrigerant. Uh, some people even said that that may impact R32. Well, you know, what do you have to say that to those that uh, 
have heard something along those lines or, or, or maybe thinking that there might be, is R32 a short lived uh, experience? Nah. Yeah. We have heard that too. So yeah, the 2029 mark is very important, right? Cause only 30% of the refrigerant will be allowed, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's going to be competing. All the refrigerants will be competing for those allowances. Um, R32 will be there because R32 is a low global warming potential uh, refrigerant and it's not going to go anywhere. It hasn't been going anywhere for the last uh, 10 years. Um, what is important is that R32 is going to take us where we want. We as a company, we are looking into this compact equipment, like I mentioned before, right? Like high efficiency and inverter technology is what is going to allow in conjunction with R32 to get these best uses of refrigerant to make sure that we can get better performance and that we can get into this regulation, this phase down, that only 30% of the refrigerant will be allowed. And you need something that really use very, very short refrigerant quantities. And, and the interesting thing is um, a couple of the other manufacturers have chosen to go with a different refrigerant, 454B, but uh, about 70% of 454B happens to be R32. That's funny, right? Yeah. Uh, I know it. So that happens with R454B, that happens with R14A, and that happens with many refrigerants across the globe. R32 is a proven technology, like I mentioned mm -hmm. before. Uh, not only allows you to increase performance, but also it has superior heating properties, like for heating transfer properties, right? It's just one single component. And that is really good because from a handling standpoint, it simplifies everything and also ensures reliability, right? Just to give you an example, if you have an R32 installation and there's a leakage, you don't need to worry about it like, oh, I don't know which part of the blend has been lost, right? I'm just going to top it off. That's it. I hear also that uh, R32 is flammable and very, like, you know, like it's, it's a bomb. <laughs> Right? And that's not true. Like, it is not propane. Okay? Mm. And R32 is a very safe uh, refrigerant that really to be flowed, to get ignited, you need the perfect storm. So you couple that with also um, a refrigerant that uh, reduces the quantity of charge of the equipment and you get a very good solution. So, and, and I think that's a big thing. And so what are... When we look at the equipment, we've got a, a heat pump sitting right here. Mm -hmm. When we take a look at this equipment right here, what are some of the benefits that uh, our contractors and the end users are going to be able to benefit from as we make this switch over to R32? They're going to see an improvement in performance. That's number one, right? They're going to see also uh, how we are able to reduce the coil size in some of the, in some of the equipment. Uh, also because of the heating transfer uh, properties of the superior heating transfer properties of R32 uh, for heat pumps, we're going to see that this is going to help a lot for cold climate regions where heat pumps have to operate over there. So we're going to see how our equipment is going to jump, right, uh, to a superior properties from an efficiency capacity standpoint. So what you're saying is uh, with a, a similar size piece of equipment, my capacity is going to increase, my efficiency is going to increase, mm -hmm. and the end user is going to be able to enjoy a lot of savings with a, a very similar type unit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's exciting. What are some of the other benefits the, from, a, from a product management uh, standpoint that you're seeing as we, we move into R32? Are there any other benefits that we have? So, well, something that I didn't mention before is that the patent is open. Mm -hmm. Everybody can uh, can manufacture and do whatever they want because we are not just uh, the only ones that can manufacture R32. Uh, but other benefits that you can see is that you are reducing the carbon footprint mm. uh, and helping with those regulatory, uh, not only objectives, but also the global um, warming issues and all these targets for climate change. So. With R32, we're going to have less refrigerant charge. We're going to reduce carbon footprint, not only in our equipment and operation, but also across North America. 
So Roberto, here's the big question. Every contractor that I'm talking to, every distributor that I'm talking to, when is this product going to be available? Mm, that's the $1 million question. <laughs> so we're going to start our launch by systems. And we're going to start with the base efficiency systems late summer. Base efficiency, multifamily, right? Mm. And then after that, uh, the rest of the equipment um, to a stage and in better, they will follow through by late uh, fall. Everything okay. has to happen before the regulatory mark, right? But before January 1st, 2025, all of those products has to be out. So some contractors may be listening to this and they may be thinking, asking some questions. So you just said, okay, so we have this date, right? This date that's going to happen at the end of 2024. What happens if a contractor does have equipment in, in their warehouse that happens to be 410A? Uh, so we have, uh, so that contractor uh, will have one year to go through and try to get, you know, sell that equipment, right? So he, they have a sell, one year of sell through. Okay. Okay. So that's, I think that's something that we need to say thank you to <laughs> EPA and regulatory bodies just to give us some time to reduce our inventory. So a contractor shouldn't worry about uh, not ha or having stuff in their inventory. They've got a whole entire year, all the way until the end of 2025, to sell through any of the existing 410A inventory that they That's have. That's correct. That's for the split systems. If you have a residential package unit, you have three years. Okay. So there's no reason that a contractor should be worried about getting stuck with inventory. They got plenty of time to move this inventory out. They have time, yeah. Now, my recommendation is please move as soon as possible to R32, okay? Try to get into that technology. Try to get into inverter technology, right? Try to get into technology that is going to allow you to get to these regulatory marks, to the reduction of the, 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 um, the phase down of the refrigerants, right? Compact equipment, inverter technology. That's, that's where you have to go. And if you're not recovering, please start recovering as soon as possible because our 14A is going to go through the roof. Yeah. Roberto, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you coming on here. Do you have any final words that you want to share with our guests? Yeah. Uh, so R32 probably is the, is the next best choice of uh, the next generation of refrigerants, right? And I've mentioned many things before, but again, we're going to see our systems with improved performance. We're going to see how uh, we're contributing to reduce the carbon footprint, not only in water equipment, but in North America. And we're going to perfect there we share. Thank you so much, Roberto, for being here. And for all of our guests that are watching, if you like this episode and want to see more like it, please go ahead and hit that like button. Also, make sure that you follow us so you can be informed of all of the upcoming episodes that we have. Roberto, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me.